Hey, the 2014 FIFA World Cup is already underway, and we're here at News 10 Studios talking a little soccer. We have Thomas Stewart from the Sacramento Republic, FC. Marcos Breton, of course, from the Sacramento Bee. Brian May, Ryan Yamamoto, of course, from News 10. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the soccer and talk about the World Cup. Already underway, the United States doesn't play until Monday. They open up against Ghana. Let's talk about the U.S. What are the U.S.'s chances in the World Cup down in Brazil? You want to take that one first? <laughs> hey, I'll take that. Um, I can understand a lot of people's frustration, first and foremost, about Landon Donovan. I think experience is a, a great thing in a, in a World Cup on a national stage. But I also do understand completely Klinsmann's vote of confidence for the team he's selected, the way he's trying to play. I think they're going to play a, a direct, powerful kind of football. Um, I've seen in the friendlies already, you know, Altidore, who's maybe not everyone's favourite, kind of looks, you know, he's the main, main guy mm -hmm. up front, you know, the main guy that'll score. And um, they've a really good midfield, um, hard working and defensively, you know, they're, they're not bad. So um, I think they'll be one of the underdogs, perhaps, you know, a, a lot of people maybe have um, a Germany and Portugal as the favourites out of the group, but I do, I do believe USA will, will cause an upset. And I don't have them getting out of the group. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with that is um, the American audience sort of learning soccer on the fly. This American team is, in my opinion, the, the best we've seen. They play a more attractive brand of soccer. Uh, they're far more fluid, but they could play much better than the team did four years ago and not get out of the group. That's very likely going to happen. But I think Jurgen Klinsmann, the coach, is looking at the long term of, of building a program from the bottom up. And this, what they're hoping to do is take some steps forward. He could end up walking away very satisfied by how they play, while American fans who don't know as much about soccer could be very dissatisfied with the outcome. Can this be a successful World Cup for the United States, even if they don't make it out of group play? Yes. Uh, yes? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And what would that take? Uh, well, what would it take is showing that they belong uh, with the major teams, is, is, is instilling the confidence in particularly all these young players that they have that they... Have, have every right to be there and that they can compete and it'll show the, the, the younger guys coming up that this is a, a growing program that, that is moving in the right direction. Absolutely, I agree there. Um, to prove that they can mix it with the best in the world, I mean for a start, um, the Germans, the Portugal um, team, they have the mindset already, they have to win, whereas USA maybe don't have that just yet. So um, to go on to the next stage, you know, they, they've got to keep developing and, and keep um, improving, but I do think, I do believe they can cause an upset um, on their day and, you know, possibly not, not go that far, but they'll, they'll definitely cause a few upsets. No question, the U.S. men's national team is rebuilding, but even so, Jurgen Klinsmann this week has said he doesn't expect the team to win. Right. Do you want to hear that from your head coach? See, that's an interesting question because in the United States, we're... That's, that's against the grain sure. for us, but uh, he's looking at it a different way, and I think soccer fans would, would say, yeah, that's the truth. Uh, <laughs> that's the truth. He's just talking the truth. Uh, so it went, it went over the wrong way, particularly with older fans in the United States, but he's trying to build something for the long haul, and when he's looking honestly at this World Cup, they go, we... We can't win. It sounds bad to the American year, but it, it's still the truth. I'm, I'm happy with the manager doing that. He's taking the pressure off the team. Teams I've played on before sometimes. The manager doesn't want the players reading the media's comments, you know, the newspapers, the TV. Right. They want them taken aback, concentrate on the football, relax, have a clear mind. Yes, maybe they, they might not be the favourites on paper, but deep down he'll be, they'll be ready to go. And you believe me, me, when that first ball is kicked, you know, they'll be right up for it. Thomas, you talked about when the Republic played the earthquakes earlier this week, the mindset of some of your younger guys, first time they've played the bigger boys, maybe some yeah. nerves to start the game or the matches. For the United States, when these younger guys, that's Germany. Mm -hmm. How much do they have to overcome that mindset in, on this stage? Well, uh, again, there's probably, it's probably a lot um, minor there because, I mean, you're talking about elite athletes here, you're yeah. talking about the top, top professionals of the world that have earned the right to be at a World Cup. Um, these players have played, some of them have played at a really good level, played in World Cups. Some of them, it's, a, it's the first for them, but I mean, they've got a, a good blend of experience and youth. Once they get on the field, it's a, it's a different matter. Yes, sometimes the mindsets and you can grow into the game, but I firmly believe, you know, stick to your game plan, which I'm sure with Clint's man will be drumming into the players. You stick to your game plan, you can frustrate anybody and then grow into the game. So yeah, I believe they get off to a good start. United States, they open up against Ghana. Ghana's the last two teams, or last yeah. two times, yeah. have, have knocked them out of the World Cup. Is there a sense of 
revenge, I say, or a sense of pride and redemption going against Ghana, or at least opening against well, them? Well, they're going to be they're going to be really pumped up to play in the first game, as all the teams will. But I think looking at their schedule of games, this is a game where you almost have to win it if you if you really want to have a chance to advance. It, and also getting those three points right out of the gate would be great for their confidence as well because then after this is Portugal and then Germany. So this is a game that if, uh, if, if they win it, it'll put them in a good spot. Yeah, you can't really dwell too much on the history. Yes, they've been a bit defeated before, but um, if that plays a part in, in their mindset, then, uh, then I think that's, that's the wrong way to go about it. You should be just looking to you know, do your bit, whether it's make a run or make a tackle or whatever it is, you know, your input. But, um, you know, once the game the game starts, I think all that emotion you know comes out of it. Let the fans deal with that. Let the media deal with that. But this is the biggest game for USA to start with. They need to get something out of this one. Thomas, who does the United States really need to step up in order to have a successful World Cup on their roster? For me, it's it's the midfield. Uh, that, that's where most games are won and lost. I mean, you've got Bradley and Dempsey, who are in good form, who have done well for their the clubs respectively. Um, and if they can bring bring some of that into the into the international stage in the World Cup scene, I believe you know that's that's their that's their main threat. Thomas Bradley is the key player for the United States. He makes everything go. Great field vision. He's not going to be awed by this. He's played in Europe. He's played against elite players and. And he does bring that experience, and so it, it all runs through him. Uh, and if, if and if he can link up uh, with Josie Altidore, all the better. And speaking of Josie Altidore, coming into World Tra World Cup training camp, a lot of criticism. He had been in a major slump in as far as international play. Finally, scores two goals in the final friendly against Nigeria. Has he turned the corner? <laughs> well, yeah, oh, I mean, obviously that was one game. It certainly doesn't hurt that he scored two goals, but it, it, he had a dismal campaign uh, sure. in England and uh, was barely playing toward the end. So, you know, he's the guy in the front. He has to be a physical presence up there. And even if he's not scoring, he has to be causing problems and holding the ball and making the defenders work. Yep, absolutely. With the frustration you talked about earlier, frustrate the opponent. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if talking about Altidore there, I mean, he, he's the type of player that can frustrate a backline, you know, the defense of any team. He's that, that powerful, you know, he's got that presence about him. Um, I firmly believe that's their game plan, to use him to that, you know, to play the percentage off him as well. You know, if they need to um, play the ball up to him, he, you know, his ability to hold it up. Maybe he's not a not, not goal scorer, but um, he's shown in the last game he can obviously find the back in that. That will give him confidence. And for Jurgen Klinsmann to play him as the number one striker, you know, there's no reason for him to be afraid. All right, let's run down some of these groups, or all the groups, actually. You guys tell us who you like. Group A, Brazil, Cameroon, Mexico, Croatia. Thomas, we'll start with you. Group A, who do you like? Immediately, Brazil and Croatia stand out for me. Um, obviously, Croatia dropping points today will be a bit of a hindrance to them. But, um, yeah, Cameroon and Mexico have always done well in World Cups, always made the World Cups. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how they get on tomorrow. Obviously, the winner of that game. You know, puts himself in a good position. Right. You know, but um, for me, still, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Brazil and Croatia. Uh, I have a bias here. <laughs> My family's from Mexico, <laughs> and also uh, Mexico has five straight World Cups, has done very well in group play, even one very difficult group. So I'm going Brazil, Mexico. By all accounts, the Mexican team a little bit down this year, maybe. Down, and they've been down. Uh, they've had a couple of losses coming into the tournament. Yeah. So uh, they have a lot to prove, uh, and they have a great youth program. But uh, tomorrow's a big game against Cameroon, obviously. But if they win that game, I think they're in a good spot. As the host country, how much pressure is on Brazil to take the whole thing? I think we saw it. You know, yeah. I mean, every game is almost a must win, and anything less than a championship is going to be viewed as a huge failure. Yeah. Yeah, well, I agree. They're, they were a little bit nervy today, perhaps probably the most nervous I've seen a Brazilian team, but um, that was them play, probably playing with a lot of nerves, and they're still managing the win. So once they click form, you know, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be a hard team to stop. But a lot of countries have caught up to that level and to that individual level of. Um, you know, of that international level. So, yeah, I don't see anybody really fearing, fearing them, but I still believe they've got a lot of quality. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to Group B, Spain and Netherlands. Of course, those are the, in the finals in, in 2010. Chile, Australia, who do you like? Well, I, I'm going to go with Spain to win the group, but I'm going to take a bit of an upset. I'm going to take Chile second. Mm -hmm. uh, very talented team, and also I think the advantage of playing in South America is going to be huge. And I think the, the, the Dutch, though they have fantastic players, 
uh, it's a veteran squad, and, and sometimes you wonder, particularly playing in really hot conditions, if, if some of the older guys can hold up. So I'm going to go with a bit of an upside and go Spain Chile. Um, for me, it's, it's Spain Netherlands again. Chile would be my outside bet, but I think since the Euros, the Netherlands have kind of um, you know brought a new you know a new chapter to the you know there's a lot of players there that have uh, come into the team doing really well now. They've had a good World Cup campaign qualifying, um, and they're going to be relying you know on some of their experienced players now to get them over the line. But it, it, for me, it, they have a lot of experience. Spain and Netherlands play tomorrow. How big of a game is that for those two two countries? Huge. I mean, the team that loses is going to be on the back foot right away. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. I mean, that's that's the biggest game in the group, yeah, definitely. All right, Group C, obviously Colombia and Greece, the favorites in this group. Who do you like? Well, I'm going to go Colombia, definitely, but uh, I'm going to go Ivory Coast uh, for the number two spot. I, I, uh, I, you know, very attractive team. You know, it very well could be the Greeks. Uh, uh, they play a very defensive style, which isn't particularly my cup of tea, but I, I'm going to go. Greece and Ivory Coast. Um, for me, they're all kind of on an even par when you look at them. I mean, I haven't seen enough of them to say one team's going to stand out. I mean, this could be a group that excites you, or a group that could be really flat. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, it'll be interesting to see how they, you know how these teams set up. For me, it's going to be Colombian. Ivory Coast, but if you look at the last World Cup and the Euros, you had Greece that came from nowhere and won a tournament. You had Japan. Who ended up getting to the quarterfinals, semifinals, mm -hmm. um, playing really well. So you can never write anyone off, but the, I think they have more individual players and maybe a, a full good good team. Group D: Uruguay, Costa Rica, England, Italy. <laughs> Great group. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Luis Suarez is the star for Uruguay. Was the best player in the English Premier League by far. Uh, he's healthy, we're told through reports. So I, I would go with Uruguay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take England uh, to finish second in that group. Yeah, the thing about Uruguay is um, I don't know how how the players are now with uh, injuries up front, but defensively, um, I would worry about Uruguay attacking no problems as long as they're fit. You know, I could see them going through. England would probably be my the underdogs in the group. Um, they have a lot of good young players. If they can click. I can see them going quite far in the tournament without winning, but Italy on their day, you know, they, they can beat anyone. But again, you know, for the cigar, I'm going England. England get out of the group. All right, we we'll move to Group E: Switzerland, Ecuador, France, and Honduras. You know, uh, Honduras is a very underrated team, very hard-nosed team. Some might even say a dirty team. So they're they're going to come to play. Uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to go uh, with France and Ecuador. Uh, the, the French are a very talented team. Ecuador is a very underrated team, and they gave England a really hard time. So I, I'll go with France, Ecuador. I've, I completely agree there. Um, in saying that, uh, it'll be it'll be nice to see how France respond to the injury blow of Ribery. I know they they left out one of their star players in Nasri, but right. there's a purpose behind that. I've heard the manager's interviews, and um, he's doing it for the team. You know, he's the best interests of the team there. I mean, they had a bit of a shambles at the last World Cup, you know, and exploding um, players going here and there. So they seem to have gelled together. They seem to have the the nation's you know best. And um, so. I think they're ready, but uh, the South American teams are always going to be strong. After watching Ecuador last week, I think they'll get out of the group. When you when you have a manager make a decision like that on the roster, chemistry has to come into play for this. You got guys who haven't yeah. played together coming together. Absolutely. Chemistry can be hard to find sometimes. It's never guaranteed. I mean, you could have all the star players in the world. I think Man City are proof of that. They tried yeah. to buy buy the star players. It didn't work for them for for a few years. You know, had they let some players go and then. Yes, they're talking about ba they bought some players for millions of pounds, but they've got the balance right now, and it shows. You know, you can't have six or seven star players. How do you please them? Right. How do you keep them happy? You know, there's not healthy competition in the team, and that that's so important. And uh, it's a short tournament. You know, it's it's not exactly a, a big league, so they've got to get the balance right. Group F: Argentina, Bosnia Herzegovina, Iran, and Nigeria. You know, Argentina's one of the favorites, sure. so I, I got to pick them one. Bosnia is a very hard-nosed team, so I'm going to pick them too. Yeah, if you're a betting man, it's a Lionel Messi to be the top goal scorer mm -hmm. coming out of this group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, it's it's the easiest by far. I mean, there should be no no problem for them getting out. It's it's now whoever finishes second. To yeah. be honest. Mm -hmm. All right, Group G. Here we go: Germany, <laughs> Portugal, Ghana, and the United States. You know, I wish I could say that I picked the U.S. to go through. 
uh, I, I did five brackets with uh, with one of the sports websites, and I picked the U.S. to go through on one of them. Um, <laughs> that was my upset bracket. But I, I have to go Germany, Portugal. Um, you know, uh, particularly Portugal. Cristiano Ronaldo is healthy. Uh, they're really tough to beat, and, and the Germans are clearly one of the favorites. Yeah, the expectation and the experience of these two teams, for me, it's Germany and Portugal. Hopefully USA can cause an upset. Yes, if they yeah. get off to a great start, right. then they have every chance. I mean, then in the second game, they can maybe be a little bit more conservative and plan the counter-attack, but um, it's all about the, how they start. Is this the so-called group of death, at least for the United States? Or Yes, uh, that's, that's the way it was labeled. And there's, there always is one, but I mean there are other groups that are very tough as well. But uh, you know, the U.S. could not have drawn a worse group <laughs> to be with, honestly. So I, I'd be thrilled to be wrong yeah. on this. Honestly, right. I'd be thrilled to be wrong. But I, I think it's be Germany, Portugal, and finally Belgium, Algeria, Russia, uh, and Korea. You know, Belgium is one of the upcoming young teams. Uh, they have a golden generation of players that play all over Europe. So I think you have to pick them. You know the other three. It's it's almost it's almost a toss up. I'll just go with experience. I'll go with Russia. Yeah, I mean that's that's exactly how it is. I mean they have a lot of star players in Belgium as well. A lot of sorry, young hungry players. You know they seem to have gelled together as a team. Um, a lot of the players playing in top leagues. Players that have had good seasons like Hazard, uh, Yanazaz. So um, they, I think they'll they'll come and go far in the tournament. But uh, I think Russia will be strong. Um, they know how to play and mix it about as well, so I think they'll finish second. Thomas, I asked you this uh, a few days ago. I saw you at the Saturday match at home, but for guys that play soccer for a living, this tournament only comes around every four years. What does this tournament mean to you, even though you're not in it, and Ireland's not in it, but, but for you as a soccer player, what does this tournament mean to you? Well, it's, it's serving as a, as a boy, you know, growing up. I mean, that's, that's what you fall in love with first, I suppose. Um, you get to see the best of each country, you know, the most professional of each country. Um, you aim to be the best yourself, however far you get, but to watch people, fans, the way it's broadcast in the street, the media, everything about it is just completely on a different scale than any other league. Um, there's so much love for the game. Um, it's very friendly. I mean, the very, the very first World Cup I watched was in Holiday in Spain, and just completely it was just like a carnival the whole time and uh, that's the best way I can describe it you know just happy people everywhere you you've been to the World Cup before uh, no I haven't I haven't been to one no but um, I, I was actually meant to go to this Brazil one only I ended up coming to sign here <laughs> so um, swings and roundabouts but I mean you know, I'm delighted to be here and you know it's a great opportunity I experienced it in 1994 when it was in the United States sure. and went to games uh, at Stanford Stadium uh, and it was like no sporting event I've ever been to um, in that you had the uh, Brazil was anchored in the Bay Area, and so there was a huge uh, contingent of Brazilian fans there, and it felt like being in a foreign country, but being in Northern California, and uh, it's just a global uh, f festival in a way where uh, you know it's the one sport that connects the entire globe, and now the United States as well, and now particularly Sacramento as well uh, with with the Republic, uh, and so I think you're going to see a lot of pubs full in Sacramento for the next month. Not, uh, uh, productivity is going to go <laughs> way down <laughs> for the next month. Do you see the United States, or are you surprised or not surprised how quickly or how slowly fans have jumped on board of soccer? No, you know, I think people who are surprised are probably uh, people of my generation who r maybe kind of didn't grow up with it, but uh, the younger kids have grown up with it. Now, uh, you know, the major networks have invested a lot of money and brought the game to the masses through television. Uh, the, the, the FIFA video game is huge with kids, and so it's just sort of created the atmosphere now uh, for the game, and it's, it's pretty great. And Thomas, closer to home, we, we talked about this earlier. You've had four or five sold out games for the Sacramento Republic FC over at Hughes Stadium. Mm -hmm. Did that catch you guys off guard? Uh, uh, slightly. I mean, as I said before, I mean, we, we know the goal, the ultimate goal, to get into the MLS for Sacramento, which ultimately would bring fans. Um, but to have it before the season even started, the 4,000 season tickets sold, and you know, for the home opener to get 20,000 fans to come, to continuously get 20,000 fans to keep coming, is just incredible. And you know, it shows how much the fans love it here. Um, and to bring that into Bonnie Field as well, we've a, a sell out of 8,000 already. You know, that's it's incredible. And I don't think you get that. It's unheard of for me. You know, so I'm absolutely delighted. I'm, you know. No, totally gobsmacked at it, you know, 
Um, just <laughs> can't wait to play a bunny next. You know. <laughs> All right, as we wrap up, I can't let either one of you off without asking final prediction. Who wins? <laughs> I know this is the toughest question of all. I'm Who's going your pick? for a Brazil-Argentina final with Brazil coming out on top. Hmm. I'm going with a Brazil-Argentina final with Argentina coming out on top. <laughs> uh, I wish I could say Mexico. I wish I could say the United States. You don't see very many upset teams actually win the whole thing, which is different from American sports. It's traditionally a few powerhouses. So I've I got to go with Argentina. Give me, give me two teams who you think may surprise people. Uh, I, I would say watch Colombia. They're very fast. Very, uh, you know, if, if they can have that belief that, that, that they can uh, go far. And, and I would also watch um, Belgium. I, th I think that they're an up-and-coming team with a lot of young players. I would say Belgium would be one, but I think England could be a little outside one. I don't think they'll, they'll win it, but I think they'll, you know, they'll put a few big teams out. Hmm. All right, guys, thank you very much for taking time. Thank We're you. all going to watch oh, this you. together. Yeah, so we'll hold you to it. So it's Brazil and Argentina, Argentina, Argentina and Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> it's a friendly wager. <laughs> <laughs> all right.